what we have is a growing number of circuits. And so the question becomes for a city like Mumbai, what are the multiple circuits on which that city is located? In, and there probably are 70, 80 for a city like Mumbai. In doing that, one also begins to understand what are the other cities on each of those circuits that are part of this globalized infrastructure. And my fantasy, and it is a fantasy, is that the leadership, both the political leadership, the corporate leadership, the civic leadership of these cities that are located on particular circuits, that they can start working together. I think of these specialized multiple circuits in which a city is located, and the diversity of cities on each of those circuits as a kind of infrastructure for a new type of governance, global governance, but also urban governance. Now, because of this platform that is built, uh, there is a displacement. And there is a whole series, not just of political issues, but of economic issues that come about. One quick way of putting it is that the global city is a place where inequality grows. And I want to just share some figure from Manhattan. Manhattan being the extreme zone within New York City. All cities, as far as I'm aware of, have inequality, and they have always had it. There are times, though, when that inequality grows dramatically. This is one of those times. Now, in the case of Manhattan, I'll just read quickly through some of these figures. You can see that in 1980, when this cycle of globalization is just about to take off, top 20% of earners in Manhattan were just talking people who actually have a job. That doesn't include everybody in Manhattan. Made 21 times what the bottom fifth made. Now, Manhattan at that point ranked number 17 in terms of inequality in the country, or the counties in the United States. In 1990, the top 20% in Manhattan made 32 times what the bottom 20% made. And today, the top 20% made 52 times what the lowest 20% make. And now, Manhattan today has a proud position of being number one of all the counties in the United States in terms of inequality. I don't want to speak about Mumbai, I'm not an expert on Mumbai on these issues, but it does seem to me that if it's happening, it's including in London, including in Paris, and in Frankfurt, and in Oslo, and in Copenhagen, we see these trends, not as extreme, as in the United States, but the trends are there. I would have a very hard time believing that this is not happening in Mumbai. In other words, yes, globalization brings an enormous amount of dynamism to the picture of cities, to the economy of cities, but it comes with a price, and we've got to recognize that. Now, one of the trends that I find in my work on several global cities, but not Mumbai, is that what tends to shrink is the standardized economic sectors, the middle sectors, and the middle level of jobs. They don't disappear, but they tend not to be particularly uh, sort of dynamic. They are not growing. What grows is a top 20%, an extremely rich new middle class, and a bottom of you know, a mix of low-wage workers and, and workers with jobs that now pay less than they used to pay. I think these are all very serious issues that need to be you know, dealt with. Um, one component in all of this is the growth of a new kind of <coughs> informal economy. In the case of the global north cities, whether that is Paris, whether that is Berlin, whether that is London or New York, this new informal economy is very visible because governments in those countries have managed to regulate all jobs and to sort of eliminate the older informal economies. This new informal economy is not somehow you know, an anachronism in these cities. This new informal economy is part of the advanced urban economy. Not all of it, but quite, quite a bit of it. 
in the cities of the global south, this new informal economy is submerged under the older informal economy, and hence it's much less visible. But the research that I know about in a city like Sao Paulo, for instance, suggests that you also there have this new informal economy that is part of advanced capitalism. That, I think, feeds, in a, in a place like Manhattan, some of this lower, you know, this growing inequality. I want to now quickly move, because I am being disciplined in terms of time here, to a series of data where Mumbai is part of the story. Now, the expertise in the room here about Mumbai is much larger than the team of people, I was part of that team, <coughs> who worked on this study. The study is interesting. We looked at the 65 top sort of uh, cities that some of them are full-fledged global cities, others are more cities with global city functions. Now, this is just, Mumbai is not all the top 20. This is just a quick framing, and what I do like is that London is number one now. This is not the only study that shows that, but as you can see, the top 20 is a whole mix of cities. Um, I should explain that we, we used 100 data points aggregated into six major variables, and I'm happy to put the full study on the website.